Okay, so I got the LEDs are installed inside the dish light housings. Test them, make sure they work. So they're all working now. So the next step is to install the housings and the ditch light housings and railing back onto the locomotive. To do that, it's just a matter of a little bit of CA glue on the back side of these and I push them into place. And the ditch light housings, I use a, a small piece of this fun tack just to uh, act as a seal on the bottom of the housing so no light bleed comes out because you can see there. So I'm going to go ahead and install the light housings back onto the locomotive. Okay, so all the LEDs are installed now. They all tested good. So I test them again after I uh, install them into the shell and into the ditch light. So you can see they're threaded through there, installed and secure, as well as in the shell. And uh, for this one, I just used a piece of black electrical tape to stop the uh, light bleed, not really a problem in the back there. And the same goes for the front, you can't really see in there. But just I uh, had the cab apart and used black electrical tape to uh, cover the backs of those LEDs. So now it's just a matter of connecting all the wires together. So all I do is uh, Put a piece of shrink tubing onto the cathode of the LED. So the way I do it, that's the short lead. So I will do all these. Cut a short piece to go on, put it on there, solder it on, like tin them first and then solder it, and then slide the, the uh, shrink tubing over it so it protects the whole thing. And then uh, finally I'll just use my soldering iron to uh, melt all the shrink tubing and get it snugged up. And then it's uh, way to the races. It's uh, done pretty much, just buttoning it up. So I'll go ahead and uh, maybe I'll just do a before and after of one of these. And then you can kind of get an idea of how I do the soldering and uh, shrink tubing on connecting the LED lead to the resistor. There you can see I've got all my uh, little pieces of heat shrink tubing uh, cut and put on the cathode wire and uh, same did for the ones in the shells. So next I'm just going to tin the uh, ends of the resistors, tin the leads and solder them together. And since this is pretty much the uh, final step of soldering, I will do the speaker leads including the one in the shell and the uh, the tabs on the decoder underneath there here and I'll wire those up in series and that'll be it then it'll just be a matter of putting the shell back together buttoning it up and taking it down to the layout a word of caution when you're doing this final soldering keep the soldering iron tip well away from any plastic parts like these handrails or anything else because they will bend in seconds if you get close. And I, get, I got a little too close to uh, the last one I did and uh, melted this handrail a little bit. So be very careful when you're soldering and you, I mean you're so close to the end you know make sure you don't get a, a drop of solder like I said before be very careful around the board so there it is guys, it's all done, finished up. I left one just to show you. You can see the solder there. And then I just uh, simply slide the heat shrink tubing over it, cover it up. And the uh, last thing I'll do is just go around and touch them with my soldering iron and that uh, cause them to shrink around the wire and protect it. So up on the front there you can see those two are the ditch lights. The speaker leads are underneath right there. S, positive and negative. The two front headlights are there. And then all the commons for the uh, 
or the headlights and the ditch light, the front headlights and the ditch lights, sorry. All those common anode leads go there. And that's just following the diagram. And there you can see the rear headlights, uh, two of them on the back of the decoder. And the uh, one connection for the second speaker in series is right there. I just do the same thing, solder it, and then slide a piece of uh, heat shrink tubing over it. So the last step is to now test it before I do anything, make sure everything's working right. You'll see here black electrical tape on there and there. And that's something I do now because I had a problem with... Uh, one of the leads on a previous locomotive got stuck on got caught up in the drive and it actually like ripped the the lead right out of the LED wrapped it all around the drive shaft and it was a huge mess to clean up and then I had to take it apart to fix it super annoying so now I try to uh, cover up the at least the universal joints there and there with electrical tape and then hopefully it'll just shield the uh, the leads from getting caught in there because you really have no control of where they go once you put the shell on so I'm going to go ahead and finish the uh, heat, heat shrink and test it out. So I got it on the test track. It's a good sign. Everything's working good. The only thing I gotta do is make sure the lights work, speaker works good. But that's awesome. Everything was working perfectly on it. So I can go ahead and put the shell on and close it up for good. Yeah, so that pretty much wraps it up. The last thing I do is, uh, I got it on my program track there, as you can see, and I'll use JMRI to put momentum in it and uh, customize the sound and do all the fun stuff that you can do with Decoder Pro. I also have to flip around the uh, locomotive's forward direction because I wired the motor leads backwards. It's just the way it works out, but it's a two-second fix on JMRI. So I'm going to go and do that. That'll wrap up this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope it helped. It was kind of a, a long process to uh, film this. So uh, leave your comment and let me know what you thought. Um, these kind of how I videos are the hardest ones to film. So let me know what uh, if this worked for you or if you found this helpful. As always, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.